Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. And love it or hate it, the FBX graphics format is still one of the most important in the world of game development. And if you're working in Godot, it can be a bit of a pain in the butt. So here we are in Godot 3.5, and the actual process of dealing with an FBX file, as long as it works, was quite simple. I'm just going to go ahead, we'll open up our project here. I have the uh, FBX file I want to work with right there. And literally, you just drop it into your game world, and boom, the importer runs, and it is now here. We can go ahead. Head. We can create uh, an inherited scene from it. Here is our imported object. Uh, and Bob's your uncle. Everything is good to go. We can even go ahead, check out some animations on that fellow right there. And boom, there we just brought an animated model into Godot 3.5. Now, one of the big problems with FBX files in Godot 3.5 is they rarely work this well. The reason why this one worked as well as it did is because this is a Mixamo object. And for some reason, Mixamo objects just seem to universally work. Now let's look at the same process of importing an FBX file into Godot 4.0. So here we are in Godot 4.0, exact same process. Let's locate our directory like so. Let's go ahead, grab our FBX file, drop it into our project directory and uh, should automatically, oh, wait a minute, nothing's happening. Okay, there's an issue here. What is that issue? Well, we need to go ahead and grab the FBX to GLTF. Now, I'm hoping when Godot 4 finally goes live, right now it's still a beta, but once it's actually live, I really hope that this uh, tool is shipped with Godot. Right now, it is a third-party product. I think it was originally actually authored by Facebook, uh, but this is a fork of it by vSekai. This is the one you want to go ahead and download. Now, depending on your platform, you're going to grab the appropriate version. This is the link version, this is the Mac OS version, and this is the uh, Windows version. I've downloaded this version right here. Now do keep in mind if you are on Linux or Mac OS, you're going to want to schmod plus X or give the executable attribute to these two before it'll work. If there is, if you do not set that attribute, it is not going to work right. But once you have done that, then we head on back over to Godot and we go to the editor settings editor setting right here, head on down to importers, and then there is this option here for FBX to GLTF path. So go ahead and boom, and then what we do is we locate that directory. So it's in my downloads folder, it is this guy right here, and say open. So it is now going to use that importer for that process. Now, I don't know if this is a bug or something. Again, this is a beta version, but I actually had to shut down Godot 4 and start it back up before that GLTF would actually locate new FBX files brought in. But it should be working now, so I'm gonna go ahead, open in File Manager. Uh, we'll go back again, grab our FBX file, drop it in our project directory like so, and now instead of getting the error, it will automatically import in our objects. We should go ahead and be able to create one right now. So let's drop one in the scene, set it to the origin. So let's move this guy back to zero. Now I do wish there's a bug here when you tab over to Y, you can't do keyboard entry. So you got to manually hit it again. I do hope that gets fixed soon. But as you can see, there is our object in the world. And again, let's go ahead and check out the animation player on this guy. And you will find your animations came in just fine. So um, it actually, for some reason, I think it might just be the default rendering settings. Uh, it looks better. So it comes in looking a little bit better than this one. Maybe just, yeah, it's just default rendering settings. So default rendering settings of Godot 3.5 were very uh, washed out, unfortunately. So that is how you bring an object in. Now, another thing to know with FBX files, uh, with uh, Godot 4, uh, they're going to change in the way things work. So now if I select an FBX file right here, a lot of things have been moved into the import process. So for example, uh, you come down here, here is the import of our 3D model. There is now this advanced tab right here. And what you're going to find is things that you previously did in another manner before you now do as part of the import process. So for example, I come down here to our animation. If I want to have looping, I set the looping over here in loop mode and then re-import the animation. I also find that this functionality, this advanced import functionality is very, uh, let's call it problematic. It's not working as well as it should. So, so far we looked at bringing in a well-behaving asset. Now let's say we had to bring one in that was a little bit more um, work involved. And I'm gonna use another example. I'm gonna take in this asset right here, which just for October creeps the hell out of me. Uh, this is uh, a Unity asset and bringing in Unity assets is a pretty common thing to want to do. 
So this one is actually from the Nature Manufacturer PBR Graveyard. Uh, that is currently part of a Humble Bundle. So again, everything you're seeing here, these are just FBX files in Unity that you can easily use in another game engine, which is what we're going to see in action right here. Now there is a bit more of a process because here they're set up as prefabs. So all of the material work was done on the Unity side of things. So you're going to have to do that yourself if you bring it over into the, um, the Godot side of things. So here we are in the uh, PBR Graveyard. We'll go here into the models. And we're going to want to grab from here. So I'm just going to go ahead and open this up in Explorer. So uh, open, show in Explorer. So here is our directory. Uh, it's uh, Angel Figure right there. So we're going to grab that guy. And we're going to just copy that. And then we're going to paste that into our project directory, which still actually should be open. Okay, I don't know what's going on there. So let's just go ahead back over here. Um, open Explorer and paste. So that will automatically import our FBX file. Boom, it is now in. Now what you're going to find is you didn't necessarily get your material. So we're going to head back over to uh, the directory for the um, the PBR graveyard from the Unity project. I just go into the textures folder and we want the T underscore angel figurine. And then we've got uh, three different textures available over there and then boom drop them in over here and you're going to notice it automatically does the texture import as well so when you're dealing with textures for example this one here is a normal map uh, by the name uh, it should figure out that it was a normal map so there is a normal option where did you go mode detect no that's for roughness Mip maps mode lossless opaque channel map Okay, it should pull it in. So I guess we're good to go. Okay, so we brought that one in. We have our three objects and we've got our uh, model here. So here is the uh, model in action. One thing you're going to notice is there are multiple LODs here. So they bring one each one in. But you'll also notice as part of the import process, uh, you can actually have it. So if I grab the FBX here, we look at the import here. When we import it in, you can have it automatically generate LODs for you. So we can have a generate LODs, turn that on or off. Well, this one already has its built in, so we don't want to import them. So we're going to create our own. So there is our thing. We'll go ahead and create it that way. So we have our angel figurine. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll create an inherited scene from it. There we go. Pretty straightforward. Let's go back over here. So now the problem is so we've got these multiple LODs. We're only going to deal with LOD zero. So I'm just going to turn all the other four off. That's the highest resolution of the four LODs. And now what we need to do is actually create a material for it. Now you're going to notice on each one of these things. So if you want to override the default material, there's no material on these objects because they were created as part of the Unity pre 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 prefab. So you've got this surface material override. We could create one this way. What I'm going to do is come over here and say new resource. Uh, and then I want to create a standard material 3D. So just like this, there is my new material. We'll call this angel mat like so. And there is our new material. And then it's just really a matter of hooking up all the things that are relevant. So for example, our normal map, we come down here, go to normal map and say, yep, we want to use a normal like so. And we will drop this normal onto that field. Now we're going to do the same thing. We want to do the albedo right here. So color, that is this guy right here. And we'll drop the color channel in on there. So you can see it created right there. And then we have some kind of put together. This is your metal map and ambient occlusion maps in one. So go metallic texture and then this one. So, the, okay, so there's no enabling for metallic. We just basically drop that one into place over here and drop it in like so. And then finally ambient occlusion, same deal. We turn ambient occlusion on and drop the same map into the ambient occlusion slot. And there is our texture uh, for our model. So go ahead. Uh, our texture should be good to go. Uh, save our scene. So we're going to call this angel figurine dot scene. And I said earlier on, you just select the mesh object that you want to deal with. They have their surface material override. And we just created our new surface, our new material. Just drop this on there. And there is your character ready to go. So that is how you can bring in an FBX file where you have to sort of uh, do some of the, the reconstruction of the material yourself. Uh, you just use this surface material override on it. No problem at all. Now, I want to point out there are some glitches in place. Like if I, for the import process, for example, this whole area needs some refinement. So if you find some issues here, don't be surprised. So if you're dealing with something and you're in the import tab, for example, you could come in here in the advanced and you say, okay, well, I only want to deal with this LOD. So I don't want this one, this one, this one, or this one. For each one of these, you can actually say skip import, skip import. 
skip import. So it'll only bring in the stuff that you're interested in, like so, and then do a re-import on it. The only problem is it doesn't work. <laughs> so that part is just not in place yet. Some of these uh, advanced settings uh, just aren't in place yet. So if you're wondering, if you're coming from Godot 3.x and you're wondering where something went in terms of importing, there's a decent chance it was moved in here. Because in addition to uh, scenes, you got some control over the, uh, the meshes that are brought in and how to deal with them. Uh, also for the materials that are brought in. And you can also have it use an external material that you can define like so. But again, I also find that this out of the box, it just doesn't work. So I do find a lot of this stuff from the advanced, I think it might just be placeholders in general. Uh, and hopefully FBX functionality gets better as we go on. But as you see, there is our, um, our 3D model brought in from the Unity engine. So Unity version, our version. So it works uh, it, like you bring in things flawlessly. In the case of uh, again, the Mixamo stuff, it automatically handled and just uh, brought in and dealt with the model and the textures and everything. So it should just work. But in the case where you're not necessarily having pre-configured materials baked into the FBX file and you need to create them yourself, we also showed you how you could go about doing that using the um, surface material override process and basically just rolling the material yourself. So that is how you work with FBX files inside of Godot 4. Unfortunately, again, you do need to go ahead and download that GLTF so by the way, this, this bundle runs for another 10 days. If you're looking to get a bunch of nature assets, uh, this could be a good pickup for you. Again, everything is just FBX. So as you saw, pretty easy to use. Uh, the model itself, it came from Mixamo, but the thing that you're going to need to do any of this is definitely this FBX to GLTF download. I will have that linked in the linked article down below. So I do hope that this ultimately does get shipped with Godot 4 because making people download a third party tool to get support for probably the most popular 3D file format out there. I know GLTF works better. I know they also offer um, Blender support. So you'll notice when you're in the editor here, um, under the importers, there's also the option for specifying Blender and having it evoke Blender as part of the import process for bringing in a blend file over to um, the Godot engine. But if you're working in any other tool, you probably export. So if you're working in Max or Maya uh, and you want to export out, you're going to probably be using FBX format and it should be an out of the box feature. But again, I'm not gonna judge beta software based on if they do or don't have a feature. But if you're wondering how to get FBX working inside of the Godot 4 engine, I just showed you two ways. The straightforward way hopefully works. And if you've got to rebuild things yourself, it's not that bad either. So let me know what you think. Comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.